In a hurry? Uh, I'm a little late. What have you got in that? Just a few personal things. Open it up. You have no rights. The key, or do you want us to open it? Here, let me. You are making a mistake. I'm Stanislaus Jurgens. I'm a loyal citizen of the East German Republic. We will see. You see? Papers? Pajamas? <laughs> Mike, you can see it all from here, East and West Berlin, both halves of the world. But the wall's still right down the middle. Yes, the geography hasn't changed since we were last here. The wall's just become harder to climb over. What about the people, Carl? Have they changed? Superficially, no. But I could be wrong. For I can see a change in myself since I saw you last. What do you mean? We should get rid of this wall. Make Berlin one city again. If that happens, this half would be swallowed up in a minute. As it is, Mike, we are getting a little neurotic. There comes a time when you grow so used to, to mistrust and subterfuge, you doubt your own motives. Living in a split city seems to split one's personality. I've never heard you talk like that before, Carl. Uh, I never thought this way before. In fact, I'm not sure I think this way now. I'm just tired of being at the flashpoint of world politics for so long. We'd like to be just a nice, quite normal city, like New York or, or Kalamazoo, for that matter. Yeah, that's exactly what they want you to think. Could be. Maybe I'm just a little tired. This news bureau job is a 23-hour day. 
I've been married for less than a year, and now I hardly ever see my wife. Oh, that reminds me. We'd better go, Mike. Where are we going? I said I'd pick up Linda at her school. Oh, she goes to school? Language school. I married a young English girl, but not that young. What's she taking? German. German? She wants to talk to me in my own language. Maybe she just can't understand your English, Carl. <laughs> Der Bekannte Photograf Michael Strait wird heute mit ihm einer Bildreportag in West-Berlin machen und wird unser Gast sein. Thank you, Mrs. Wilhelm. But I must remind you that the German A is pronounced A, uh, as in Abend. A, Abend. So, now translate what you have written into English. My husband is the bureau chief here in Berlin of a world magazine. Today, Michael Strait, the famous photographer, is doing a picture coverage on West Berlin with him and will stay with us as a guest. Very good. Now, if any of you have done homework, would you please leave it with me? Yeah, yes, Herr Lundberg. Ah, Dr. Wilhelm. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Mr. Strait. Oh, good afternoon. How do you do? You have come for your wife? Yes, sir. I hope I'm not late. No, I think you are a little early. Uh, come, we will see. Ah, she's in room seven. Let us see how she is progressing. Wir beabsichtigen im Sommer an die Ostküste zu gehen. Is that your wife? Yes, that's Linda. She's coming on very well. Übersetzen Sie jetzt die Aufgabe auf Seite 93. The next student, bitte. Uh, that's her teacher, Herr Fosper. Ah, that's the end of the lesson. She will be out in a moment. Come on, Mike. Your uh, school is very up to date. Oh, thank you. Yes, we are very proud of it. We have students here of many nationalities and the best teachers in the world. Well, uh, good day. Good day. Hello, darling. You're early. Good afternoon, Herr Fosfer. Oh, Doctor. Did you have a good lesson, my liebchen? Of course. I'm the ideal pupil. Did you hear what she said? No, it is true, Doctor. She is making great progress, but uh, still she has an English accent. And don't you make her lose that. I like it. Hmm. As you say, Doctor. Oh, Linda, I would like you to meet Mike Strait. Hello, Mike. Hello, Linda. I've been so looking forward to meeting you. Or well, my husband's told me so much about you. Well, when I heard that you were coming to Berlin to work with him, I insisted that you stayed with us. I hope that's all right. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> Carl has stayed single for so many years, I was surprised to hear he'd gotten married. <laughs> Easy to see why he changed his mind. Maybe he regrets it. Ah, uh, I'm just infatuated, Mike. <laughs> You're just ridiculous. <laughs> when I hear her speak like that, I know, Mike, the honeymoon is over. We've been married nearly a year. And in another year, I should be a complete German housewife. I think if you marry a man, you must adopt his country. That is, if you want it to work. I shall end up being more German and... Who are you? With apologies, Dr. Wilhelm, I am Stanislaus Jürgens. I come here because... Who let I you in? I let myself in. I have many keys. Did you say Stanislaus Jürgens? Yes. You know me? I know the name. Good. In some quarters, I am quite famous. You know him, Mike? He's part of a story I did once. What was the story? It's on the East Berlin spy system. I, uh... I featured a man by the name of Jürgens. That was me. I am that Jürgens. Do you know who I am? Yes, of course, Mr. Strait. I come here especially to see you. Linda and I will be in the next room. You might be interested in this, Dr. Wilhelm. Well, I'll go and get the dinner. Do we have another guest? I don't think so. You are very kind, Mrs. Wilhelm, but my business will not take long. I think it is proper to show you my credentials before I begin to talk business. Passport, documents, letters, photographs. Just exactly why have you come here, Mr. Jürgen? 
I wish to do business. What sort of business? I understand that you are working on the Berling story, Mr. Strait. Now, that is epic subject. Now, uh, look, Jürgens, if you... You wish to include both sides of the wall, I take it. Now, I can supply you with the names, secret letters, recorded opinions of some of the most influential and important officials in the east of our city. Security files, microscopic films, lists of agents employed by us. By the east? Yes. Lists of agents employed by you. How did you get those? I take risks. Without these documents, you can only guess the full story. But with these, you will be able to tell the truth. And as proof of my good faith, I have also brought you a copy of the Polmid Code. The Polmid Code? The current one. Obviously, these things are for sale at a price, Mr. Jurgens. Of course. Well, I could certainly use them. But you should have gone to the Allied military government with this material. I don't think they would be the highest bidders. I'm sure you're right. But I don't buy and sell this kind of stuff. It's classified. Until it's cleared by security, I wouldn't even think of touching it. Very well. Let us get permission from your authorities at the earliest possible moment. All right. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. The department's located. I know it very well. You're to ask for a Cutler. colonel. Cutler. I know. I shall be there. Now, in case you wish to contact me before tomorrow. Now, these documents are very valuable. Perhaps I might leave them in your safekeeping. Well, I couldn't assume that responsibility. This is not my apartment. It's all right, Mike. I will keep it till morning. You have a safe, dependable? Yes. A very dependable one, with only one key. <laughs> Well, at first glance, this all seems authentic, Mike. That's what I thought. What about the Palmit code, Colonel Cutler? Oh, we've checked that out against recent material, and it works. Isn't that right, Captain? Well, what's the one, all right? They've been using it for about a week. Oh, in time, we'd have broken it ourselves, of course. Mm hmm And uh, Jorgens gave you all this? Not exactly gave. It can be had, but for a price. Well, that figures. He's late. Let's hope he hasn't had second thoughts. I think you should see this, Colonel. Thank you. When was this monitored? 8.25 this morning. Listen to this, gentlemen. It's an East German directive sent out to their top-level security officers under first priority. Pullman code A72 no longer in use. This is not, repeat, not to be employed in any circumstances. Vulnerable. A72, that's the code Jurgens brought me. Interesting, isn't it? He gave it to us. To you, last night, and by this morning, his recent employers know all about it. But it has been in our keeping all that time. And obviously, there's been a leak. What about Jorgens himself? Well, he certainly wouldn't tell the people he had stolen it from. That would really foul up his sale. Someone told them, and he hasn't turned up. You know where he might be? He, uh, he gave me this address. Well, if this is some kind of double cross, I doubt very much if Jorgens will be sitting there waiting for us to pick him up. Well, it's the only lead we've got. All right, then let's use it.
Miss him? Yeah. How long do you think he's been dead, Colonel? I'm no expert, but I'd say several hours. Somebody worked pretty fast. Yeah, I'll send for an ambulance. Oh, Mike. Hmm? I'd like you to come and see me after I've had a chance to go through those documents in some detail. Say, about 6 o'clock tonight? Right. Mike, what does he mean by that? 6 o'clock, I'll find out. Colonel, Mr. Straight, sir. Oh, come in, Mike, come in. Sit down. Thanks. I asked you to come over because I think you ought to know a little bit more about this situation. Cigarette? No, thanks. Fire away. Well, Dr. Wilhelm is chief of your news service bureau here, right? That's correct. We're doing a photo story on the Berlin situation. Uh, you've worked with him before, have you? Oh, several times. Been in some tough spots together. As a matter of fact, he, uh, he got me out of a tight corner in Budapest during the Rising. Almost got himself shot. I owe him a lot. Sounds like you might be just a little bit prejudiced in his favor. I don't know what you mean by prejudice. He's a great guy. I'm happy to call him my friend. That's exactly what I mean. You probably know that uh, a little over a year ago, Wilhelm married a young and very wealthy girl. I know. We met. Well, according to my information, she's cut herself off from her family since they got married. Apparently now she's accepted her new life, her new country, and plays the part of a simple German housefrau. So she tells me. However, the simple life of a German housewife as played by someone with her upbringing could uh, still be a very expensive proposition. Just what are you getting at, Colonel? Well, within the last eight months, there have been three indications that classified information has been getting through to our friends in the East. And that means that someone on our side has been letting them have it. And in each case, the only common factor has been Dr. Wilhelm. What? Well, that's ridiculous. I know Carl. Oh, look, Mike, Jurgens arrived at Wilhelm's apartment last night and left these documents. By this morning, they know about it in the East and Jurgens is dead. If you suspect Carl, you might as well suspect me. You weren't in Berlin on those other occasions. You expect me to believe this? I told you I know the man. I've worked with him, fought alongside him, been in situations where you get to know what a man is really like. Look, Cutler, Wilhelm helped build West Berlin. Why should he give information that would tend to destroy it? Mike, let me draw you a diagram. Wilhelm is very much in love with his wife, right? Right. She's younger than he is and used to nothing but the best. Now, it's reasonable to expect that he'd like to go on giving her the best. Oh, you're saying he was short of money because his wife had expensive tastes? I'm not just saying it, it's a known fact. So he sold information to get a little loose cash. A lot of loose cash. Well, I repeat, it's ridiculous. Look, if you're so sure he's innocent, maybe you'd like to help prove it. Innocent? Who says he's guilty? Come with me. Mike, you know Captain Wells? Captain? She's one of my most experienced code and cipher officers. As a matter of fact, it was Captain Wells who examined the papers Jurgens brought from the East. Now, take a look at this, would you? Does that look to you like a document which could have been taken from Jurgens' body? I suppose so, if the ink were dry. We can soon rectify that with blotting paper manufactured in the East. And the ink of the paper? From the East as well. As a matter of fact, although we wrote all this here in my office, it's going to look exactly like the rest of the material that Jurgens gave us. Colonel, why should I know about all this? Because I'm going to give you this document to examine in Wilhelm's apartment tonight. I want you to make a point of letting him see you looking at it. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, look here, Mr. Strait. Supposing this information came back to us from East Berlin within the next two or three days, wouldn't it be obvious that Dr. Wilhelm had sent it? Will you do it? Do you realize you're... You're asking me to frame, Carl. I'm not asking you to frame anybody. All I want you to do is put this man to the test. You've got to cooperate. Got to? Who's giving me orders? At the moment, I am. And as an American citizen, you have an oh, obligation. Oh, no, what's that got to do with it? Oh, come on, Mike. You know the Berlin situation as well as I do. It's just as explosive now as it's ever been. And the only way we can keep from blowing sky high is by being just as smart as the boys next door. If there happens to be a weak link on our side, it's a danger to everyone. Now, this man may be your friend, but you've got other loyalties. Oh, well, Let me cutter. finish. I admit, this is a dirty job. And I know you don't want to do it. But if this man Wilhelm is what we think he is, we've got to stop him before he does some real damage. And right now, you're the only person in a position to help us. So how about it? You better know exactly what you're doing. Hello, Mike. 
Oh, hello, Linda. Carl, not back yet? No, not yet. How about a drink? Oh, thanks. He won't be long. I have the most attentive husband. You really like it here, don't you? Oh, it's wonderful. Don't miss home? Well, this is my home. So, in less than a year, you're a real Berliner, huh? Oh, I'm trying to be. I don't pretend I never get homesick. But this is Carl's world, so it's mine. He's lucky. So am I. He's a fine man, Linda. And he's really part of this place and its history. History? He's only 20 years older than me, Mike. Well, in 20 years, you can make a lot of history. And that's exactly what Carl's done for this place. I know. Mike, hmm? do you think me being married to Carl has changed him? In what way? Well, I seem to fill a lot of his world now. Is that wrong? Well, of course not. Except maybe he sees, well, fewer people. Has less time for politics in Berlin. He still seems pretty busy. Good evening, Bertha. Or have you two met? No. Oh, Bertha, this is Mike Strait. Mike, this is Carl's sister, Bertha. How do you do? I thought Carl would be here. He won't be long. It's important that he should have his meals on time. I wouldn't worry too much, Bertha. Oh, I know you don't, but there's need to worry. Hello, everybody. Am I late? Yes. Hello, my liebling. Did you miss me? No. No, oh, please. Sorry, Vile Job, Mike. Not at all, Carl. Gave me a chance to talk to Linda. Oh, by the way, I finally met your sister. Oh, good. I told you Bertha used to live here and look after me before I was married. She doesn't live too far away now and likes to drop in to see if things are all right. Don't you, Bertha? She doesn't mean to be rude, Mike. She never used to be like that. Well, I've tried to make friends with her. I know you have. Forgive my sister. She was in the East for many years. She never speaks of it, but I know she had a bad time. I'm sorry to hear that. She escaped only two years ago. We must do what we can for those who have suffered more than we have. I still wish she wouldn't give me cooking lessons. <laughs> and what's a poor man eating tonight, hmm? Schweinskortlet, Kartoffeln und Gemüse. Wunderbar. Sounds like you're making progress at that school. Oh, she must do. Because of the good-looking teacher. I never notice him. Now you will have burnt Schweinskortlet. <laughs> She's a charming girl, Carl. Yes, yes. What's this? Hmm? What have you got there? Oh, uh, these are some things that Jürgen's had. Colonel Cutler wanted me to take a look at them. This could be interesting. May I? Of course. She wishes to make the meal. Naturally. Oh, I hate to see you living in a pigsty. Bertha. Transport reserves. Zustand der Einheiten. Uh, transport reserves. Disposition of units. Hmm. It's all Greek to me. Uh, care to give me a hand? Yes, sure. Class. Oh, no, you won't. Here comes your teacher. Bye, Mike. Bye, Linda. Good morning, Herr Prosper. Good morning, Herr Doctor. You will find my wife's homework without mistake. I did it. I'm heading for the office, Mike. Where shall I take you? Would you mind dropping me at Cutler's, Carl? Again? He's a persistent fellow. Look, Cutler, I'm a guest in this man's house. I sit at his table. I eat his food. I talk to him with a smile on my face. This is not my sort of work. I appreciate that, Mike, but it had to be done. Well, I'm sorry I ever got mixed up in the scheme. What's more, I don't intend to repeat it. Captain Wells, will you bring in that document now, please? Now, Mike, you won't have to repeat it. What does that mean? Good morning, sir. Good morning. We received this document from a very reliable source early this morning, didn't we, Captain? We did, sir. Will you tell Mr. Strait the gist of its contents? Yes, sir. Someone has transferred a very accurate dispatch to the East, informing them that we have information about transport units. And what was that information? Details contained in the document we invented. The one you gave me? I'm afraid so, sir. 
In Beantwortung Ihres Telegrammes vom äh, 24. Oktober freuen wir uns, Ihnen mitteilen zu können. Ja. Das Trade will Sie sehen, Herr Doktor. Äh, schicken Sie ihn herein. Oh, I promised him that file on Frontier Posts. You would... Yes? Oh, Carl, uh, may I see you a minute? Yes, Mike. Alone? Uh, thank you, Frau Gilman. Carl. Carl, you remember those things that I brought home the other evening? Mm-hmm. That wasn't Jürgen's material. It was just some stuff that Colonel Cutler had dreamed up in his office. Something he dreamed up? Yes, he wanted you to see it. Why me? Well, he wanted me to bring it home to your apartment. Be sure that you were aware of its contents. Yes? Now Cutler has that information back in the East and says that we gave it to him. That's ridiculous. Why should they suspect us? They don't suspect me, Carl. I see. Carl, it doesn't make any sense. I don't believe a word of it, but unfortunately, they do. Now, we've got to fight this. Find out what really... Yeah. Colonel Cutler's here, Herr Doctor. Schicken Sie ihn herein. Carl, there must be some explanation. Come in, Colonel Cutler. You know why I'm here, Dr. Wilhelm? I hear you suspect me of giving away information. That's right. Does it occur to you that my work here gives me valuable information about a number of things? If I wanted to betray my friends and my cause, why should I give away an unimportant document about transport? Why not give them secrets of real value? Like the Hausmann Report? Like the Hausmann Report. I had that in my possession. The fact that the Allied Commission gave you access to that report shows what confidence they had in you. You also had the Allied Commission's secret records. I had? And the files on recent escapes from the East. Yes. All those documents found their way back to the East. Are you mad? Why should I intrigue with people I've been fighting all my life? Doctor, you're not making things easier for any of us. You are the only person outside security who had access to those documents. Then it's someone in security. One of your trusted helpers. After all, they're not Berliners like I am. What does it matter to them if they sell my fellow citizens to the other side? Doctor, this last document with the false information was known to only four people. I can vouch for three of them, and you are the fourth. How can you be so sure? How do you know that not somebody else? What is it, Carl? Nothing. What do you want me to do, Colonel? I want you to make yourself available at security headquarters for the next few days. Mm -hmm. And then? That will depend on the inquiry. You want me to come now? Now. Carl, you don't have to say anything yet. I'll hire an attorney. We'll arrange an investigation. I don't think we need an investigation, do we, Colonel? I think I shall be able to tell the Colonel everything he wishes to know. What are you saying? You're admitting this? Yes, Mike. I'm sorry. Let's go, Doctor. What's that? He's where? What evidence? In this house. But that's impossible. Mike, they've arrested Carl. They say he's a spy. That's what I came to tell you. Well, these papers he had, and some others. I know about those papers. You know? Yes. I know. I brought them here. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Linda, but they've suspected Carl for some time. Colonel Cutler just wanted a little more proof. Cutler wanted proof? Against Carl? And, and you gave it to him? I know he's not guilty. Mike, you came into this house as, as a guest. With bait to trick him. Is that right? I know how you must feel, Linda, and I'm sorry. Sorry? Well, what have you told about Carl? Where'd you fit into this? I haven't said anything yet. Get? I just hope they don't make me give evidence. Get out. Linda, I'll be at the Strasbourg Hotel. If you need any... Get out! Oh, good evening. Mr. 
Mr. Strait. Yes? I'm Colonel Cutler's driver, sir. Colonel Cutler would like you to see him. I wasn't expecting a call from the Colonel. It's urgent, sir. It's about Dr. Wilhelm. Oh, I see. All right. How do you recognize me? I've driven you before, sir. You have? Yes, sir, with Colonel Cutler. Strange. I don't remember. People don't remember drivers, sir. Where are we going? To uh, security headquarters? No, sir. To Colonel Cutler's private apartment. Dr. Wilhelm's there? Yes, sir. You know a lot for a driver, don't you? It isn't very far, sir. Colonel Cutler lives down here? Yes, sir. Which number? Number three, sir. Over there. Are you sure you haven't made some sort of mistake? Yes, straight. Mrs. Wilhelm's on her way now, sir. Good. Will you bring in Wilhelm yourself, Captain? Sir. I still don't get your point, Colonel. How could he have anything to do with the attack when you were holding him here at the time? Well, obviously, we don't hold all his friends. I just don't believe that Carl would want to get rid of me. I don't see why not. After all, you have important evidence against him. He's not a killer. He used to be. Isn't everyone during war? Wilhelm may feel he's fighting a war now. The most dangerous people I know of are those who dedicate themselves to an ideal, especially those who are converted from one side to another. Mike! What's happened? I, uh, I forgot to duck, Carl. Mike was attacked by two men, Dr. Wilhelm. They tried to kill him. I see. You think it is something to do with my arrest? Carl, I don't believe you had anything to do with this. I also don't believe that you had anything to do with the leakage of that information. Yes? Colonel. All right, show her in. What's that? I sent for your wife, Doctor. I thought that you'd like... Why didn't you ask me? Do you think I want her to see me here? Carl! Don't cry, Linda. What happened? Why did you let them keep you here? Linda, I know what I'm doing. Look, Colonel, can I talk to my wife alone? No, I'm sorry, Doctor. I can't allow that. Somebody's got to stay with you. What about Mike? Oh, all right. Well, now, look, Carl. Please, Mike. He gave you away. Don't worry, Linda. It's going to be all right. But you must not stay here. I don't want you left alone in Berlin. You must go back to your own people. I don't want to go. It's safer. And it's better if anything happens to me. What are you going to do? Just do what I ask. Promise you will go back to the apartment, pack and catch the first plane home. Your people will be very glad to have you back. Come. Maybe, maybe it won't be so long before I see you again. You will go back, promise? 
You must leave at once. There isn't much time. There's a plane leaving at 14.30 this afternoon. I can get my office to get you a reserved place. No, I'll do that. Have you got money? Yes. Linda, I love you. Uh, may I drive you to the apartment, Linda? No! Forgive her, Mike. She's angry. I can't blame her. I know you had no alternative. Carl... Will you do something for me, Mike? Name it. There are some documents in my safe. Please destroy them before there's any more trouble. In your apartment? Yes. But, Carl, why didn't you ask Linda? I don't want to get her mixed up in this. Oh, forgive me, Carl, but I think you treat her like a child. <laughs> she is a child. You know it. She doesn't know what's going on. I want to keep it like that. I think you're wrong, Carl. Mike, I don't have much time. Will you do this for me? What is it you want destroyed? I'm afraid you will have to take my word for this. But I promise you, you'll be doing no harm to our cause. You said you believed in me. All right. But I think I'd better wait until her plane takes off. I, uh, I doubt if she'd want to run into me again. I'm very grateful. This is the key for the apartment. This is the one for the safe. Right. things. What are you going to do? I'm getting the next one. Well, don't worry, it's all arranged. Uh, what time does it take off? I have to be at the airport in an hour, about 4.30. I'm sorry, I can't talk. I haven't much time. Oh, I understand. Uh, I was just leaving myself. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, Carl asked me to clear out his safe. His safe? It was empty. There's nothing in it. I have to go. Oh, can I help you with your bag? No. May I drive you to the airport? I have a taxi waiting. Michael Strait, Hutton Island, Inter Santan, Vesuv, Heron Jurgens. Diary of Day's Events, Teacher Herr Vosper. My husband and Michael Strait had an interesting task this evening when they had to decipher a document.
Operator, I'd like the Tempelhof Airport, please. I've checked the airport, Carl. There is no 4.30 flight. Maybe, maybe she got the time wrong. No, I checked seat reservations. Linda isn't booked on a flight either tonight or tomorrow. Look, Mike, please, leave this alone. Carl, I'm only trying to help. I don't want any help. Carl, Linda tells me that she's booked on a 4.30 flight and there is none. Now she's vanished. And you told me yourself that she has very few friends here. What are you getting at? Well, I simply thought you might be anxious. I am. I just don't want you to interfere. Carl, I think I have a right to interfere. You seem to forget that we were working on a story on West Berlin which somehow worked itself into the East. You were never suspected. No, but you were. So what's that to you? I sold the information. Oh, come on, Carl, who are you kidding? I am not kidding. But you know the sentence this charge carries. I do. And you're prepared to face it? I am, so why don't you leave it alone? Carl! Somebody tried to frame you. I intend to find out who it is. Mike, you're wasting your time. Before you came in, Dr. Wilhelm made a full confession. You did what? Yes. Here's a signed statement. Now where are you going? Carl, you're too valuable a man to throw yourself away like this. Herr Vosper? Oh, yes, he's here this evening. He gives lessons until 9 o'clock. Well, is Mrs. Wilhelm scheduled for a lesson this evening? Yes, she has lessons from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. She has private lessons. Herr Vosper, is he here now? Yes. Director, I would appreciate your cooperation. I would like to use this room at 8 o'clock this evening. And no one must know we're here. We? Oui? I won't be alone. And now, if I may use your phone, I would like to call Allied Military Headquarters. Thank you. What's the big idea, Mike? What's going on? Please, Carl, sit down. Uh, unless you'd like to tell us something now. I've told you everything. What are you playing at? Not playing, Carl. Too many people can get hurt at this game. All right. Der Mann saß am Sessel. The man sat on the chair. You know who that is? Mein Onkel it's Fosper, Linda's teacher. Kino. He's taking a class. Still nothing you'd like to say. Thank you, everybody. I'm afraid I shall not see you next Friday. You will have a new teacher for the next few weeks. I have to leave Berlin for a short while. Thank you, goodbye. Oh. Here's a taxi now, Mike. Linda, what are you doing here? She should have gone home. She, she should be on the plane. Mike, what's she doing here? I must see her. Not yet, Carl. You still have nothing to say? No. Oh, Hans. Bring that. What are you doing here? I told you to keep away from here. Well, I can't leave you, Hans. I can't. Oh, please don't make me go away. You realize what you're doing? You'll have me arrested to be arrested yourself. Hans, please. Well, you're leaving Berlin, aren't you? You must take me with you. You must. We cannot afford to be seen together. Suppose someone saw you here now. It's all right. I I've got a lesson with you. With your case? Switch it off. Linda, your husband knows. What makes you say that? Why else do you think he should take the blame? He only did this to save you, but he knows. He knows, and it will not be so long before the others guess. By that time, you must be far away. I won't leave you! And your husband? He means nothing to me! And please, you, you see, I've completely changed. I'm on your side. You were quite right. Oh, please, darling, please. I believe everything you've told me. We were wrong to be so rich, exploiting people. But I believe you, everything you've told me. Oh, please, Hans. I want to live my life with you. Please! You were a means to an end, Linda. 
Your usefulness vanished when your husband was arrested. Well, I can still find things out for you. Get out, Linda, while you still can. Otherwise, you know what will happen. You remember Jorgens. But you still love me! You silly fool! Oh. Take him down to headquarters. So you told him. I didn't tell anyone, Ron. You better come with me, Mrs. Wilhelm. I, I, I don't know, Ron. Come on. Lisa! Why didn't you leave it as it was? You were bound to have found out sooner or later, Carl. I'm only sorry I had to be a part of it. 